Welcome back to the MOOC course on research writing. My name is Aradhana Malik and I have helped you with this course uh, from the beginning. So, uh, this is the last lecture today. So, what we will do in this lecture is I like to tie loose ends. I like to go through the whole uh, series of uh, uh, slides that I have shown you. So, Shantu, when I am talking to you, focus on me. We will start again. <laughs> Welcome back to the MOC course on research writing. My name is Aradhana Malik and I am helping you with this course and uh, today this is the last lecture of this course. So, in this lecture what we will do is we will uh, wrap up, I like to wrap up the whole series of lectures and I like to uh, go through the uh, material that I have discussed with my students and then uh, reach uh, you know tie in loose ends and then highlight the sections that could have been confusing for you all. So, that is what we will do in this lecture and uh, I like to term this last lecture as a wrap up session. So, that is what we will do here. So, let us see what we discussed through the course of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 4 weeks that you were uh, with us. So, we started off we talked about research writing. We discussed what research writing was, we talked about the applications of research writing, the different stages, we talked about uh, you know we discussed this these in detail, then we discussed why it is important for you to disseminate research. We also discussed uh, the diagrams from Bjork's paper that uh, you know detailed why it is important to disseminate research results, what are the impacts of dissemination of research results. Then we talked about how you can disseminate your research, how you can share it with others who can make use of it, we talked about. Uh, then we moved on to uh, the process of publication, we discussed again from Bjork's paper, you know how you can get your articles published or how you can get your manuscripts published. We discussed various communication styles, we talked about uh, you know I gave you an exercise that you could do on your own uh, in which you could discover your own writing style. Uh, then we talked about the writing process, we, we discussed how you can uh, you know how you can start writing your papers, we talked about creativity, we discussed various methods of brainstorming or bringing about creativity in your writing and we talked about uh, the 3 P method, the 3 P's being the points, the physical features and the purpose. And uh, then we talked about the PTP exercise, the pass through prism exercise, we talked about the PNI positive negative interesting exercise, we talked about brainstorming and uh, you know as a way of exploring ideas. Then we talked about free writing, we talked about looping, we talked about clustering, various ways of generating ideas that you may come across. So, we discussed how to start uh, your research or to start before you start writing, you need to lay everything out and then you keep getting ideas and you digging, uh, keep digging more and you find out more and research writing and actually doing the research go hand in hand and that is something that I have not really talked about. So, I am going to you know add that to this lecture that writing about what you are doing and actually doing it go hand in hand. You cannot uh, do your research or conduct your research till you have written a portion of it, till you have your thoughts in order. In order to get your thoughts in order, first you need to know what is out there. So, you first your, you open your mind to the different ideas that are there. And that is why this whole these exercises on brainstorming are very important. You need to you narrow uh, down an area and then you start wondering you know what is going on between these two or three things that you want to connect or what you want to explore. So, first you let your mind free and you find out everything there is to find out and then you start digging, digging, digging and then you start reading what other people have said and then certain gaps emerge and then you start connecting the dots and say that you know this is what is known, this is what is not known and I need to go to the part where things are not known and then find out something that I can do you know and start doing it. So, uh, in order to first you are in this realm where you are trying to find out what there is to know, in order to find out more 
you need to brainstorm you need to think you need to let your mind free so that is what these creative exercises will help you do and they will provide you leads that you can use to find literature we discussed the various questions to explain a topic hmm. we talked about asking questions a different set of slides that i will just open here and then we talked about finding what to read we talked about different sources you know the library etc hmm. and then we moved on to online sources then we moved on to other sources we talked about evaluating library and internet sources we talked about checking for signs of bias you know how do you find out if these sources can be trusted if they are credible then we talked about uh, choosing what to read and then we moved on to reading research documents so we discussed two broad categories of documents uh, you know we talked about characteristics of technical texts and identifying structural elements of technical documents then we discussed uh, reading technical documents you know how do you start reading them how do you start making sense of them we talked about causes of confusion while reading and then you know how do you prepare yourself to start reading something then uh, how do you assess an argument uh, and then we moved on to paying attention to what you read we talked about various contexts of meaning hmm. we talked about different types of words and interpreting meanings and then different categories of words uh, we talked about language limiters and we talked about again about language limiters in the last set of slides where we talked about the mistakes that we make we talked about euphemisms then we moved on to reviewing literature and we discussed what literature review was and uh, you know how do you why do you conduct a literature review you know uh, some concerns or some things that you must be uh, careful of and then um, i showed you one method of keeping your records in place so this is just one of the methods you can i'm sure you have other methods but this was just one of the methods that you could use this is what i like to use it becomes uh, this is something that i suggest to my students and they found it useful as well so then we moved on to reviewing literature and uh, we talked about uh, some personal correspondence i'd had with a professor and uh, with a uh, senior mentor and then we discussed how you read articles uh, using quantitative and qualitative methods and uh, then we discussed uh, uh, why do you need to you know why english and the role of english in when you start writing so uh, we talked about various resources that can help you improve your grasp over the language we talked about why writing why do you need to write why do you need to share things when you write so some elements of good writing then we talked about uh, um, reviewing literature designing meaning huh. we talked about drafting we talked about stages of drafting the working thesis a regular thesis then we talked about uh, characteristics of a successful working thesis we talked about selecting critical stances drafting guidelines and then we moved on to supporting your claim we talked about formulating an argumentative thesis we talked about shaping your appeal we talked about formulating good reasons to support your claim so how do you actually uh, start writing your literature and a review of the literature and how do you start convincing the reader uh, about whatever it is that you're saying and how do you convince the reader about why you are convinced about certain things in the literature so that is what we uh, do through these exercises and then we started talking about uh, demonstrating knowledge you know how do you demonstrate knowledge uh, how do you establish common ground how you demonstrate fairness and then we moved on to using appeals logical emotional um, appeals and then we we talked about outlining so we discussed uh, you know how you actually start drafting your uh, document so you put your thoughts down on paper and now you need to get them organized so you make an outline we discussed the various components of effective outlines we discussed uh, the reasons for creating an outline we discussed how you can create an outline and then we talked about the inverted triangle approach hmm. and then we moved on to what outlines can contain as far as research documents are concerned now uh, 
okay so different types of outlines alphanumeric and full sentence outlines decimal outline we talked about reverse outlining and then we talked about organizing an argument the two different systems the classical system and the toolman system and we talked about these two different types of systems of uh, creating outlines then we moved on to in the third week we moved on to methodology now when we talk about methodology we we talked about uh, different uh, the differences between method and methodology we talked about uh, examples of reviews of methods we discussed a method for keeping records of or for conducting your methodology of or presenting your study of methods i shared something that i like to do and uh, you know i shared something that i do with my students and something that i like to use and i discussed this with you and this sort of tabulating everything you do and that really seems to help me and my students so so uh, this might help you as well then we moved on to methodology uh, you know what methodology can influence uh, and uh, then we moved on to the choice of method etc and then we started talking about tools for writing up literature reviews and methodology we talked about definitions descriptions different types of descriptions we talked about composing descriptions instructions different types of instructions and then we talked about presenting quantitative and qualitative data various challenges deciding when and how to quantify data suggesting the uh, suggestions regarding appearance of quantify so we talked about uh we discussed some suggestions regarding appearance of quantified data then we moved on to reducing data we talked about infographics different types of infographics how you select different types of infographics depending on what you need to do the message you need to send then we talked about you know we discussed these in detail and then we moved on to presenting qualitative data the purposes of qualitative writing and again here um i have uh, received some um queries about different types of data now i would strongly urge you to you know for specific details about qualitative research i have a uh, an moc nptel uh, uh, noc course on uh, qualitative research methods where i describe different types of qualitative research methods so i would strongly urge you to go through those videos and um, you know those videos are available on youtube please go through those videos the material is there if you want to know more about specific qualitative methods so we talked about various uh, reasons for uh, qualitative data writing and presentation then we talked about uh, we discussed polyvocality and how you present polyvocal data hmm and then we talked about presenting individual interview data um presentation of uh, historical literary and legal data etc so then we moved on to writing the results section of your paper so this was again a very important section where we talked about uh, you know how you move on from methodology to method to writing the results now uh, then you move on to purpose reasons content what you put in this section uh, the significance of a good results section we talked about how you organize your results section we talked about the content hmm, what goes into your results section the problems you should avoid and then we moved on to discussion of results analysis and discussion of results so uh, the purpose of this section the significance the general rules uh, the content that goes in the organization and structure of this session and uh, section and the overall objectives hmm, and the problems you should avoid while writing up this section so then we moved on to the in the fourth week we we talked about the conclusion section so uh, the purpose of the conclusion section hmm, you know uh, reasons for writing the conclusion section what it helps achieve general rules we talked about uh, you know the importance of presenting your conclusion well we discussed uh, uh, some techniques or some methods of developing a compelling conclusion and then some problems that you should avoid then we moved on to 
academic integrity. So, assuming that you finished your uh, document, we talked about unethical practices in written communication and implications for intellectual property. We discussed some codes and policies. We discussed uh, a checklist for ethical dilemmas. We talked about management and mismanagement of ethical information. We talked about academic misconduct. We talked about the, the different types of academic misconduct. We talked about, we, we discussed an example of patch writing. I hope you found this very useful and I hope you are going to these links that I have mentioned, you know, uh, in different parts of these presentations. Then we discussed other forms of plagiarism. We talked about some common forms of contract cheating, uh, you know, various types of misconduct, uh, academic misconduct. And then we moved on to causes of academic misconduct. Why do people resort to, why do researchers resort to academic misconduct? Then we moved on to the fact about plagiarism and dealing with uncertainty regarding the assignment of credit. When are you uncertain and what do you do about it? And eventually we talked about, you know, plagiarism caution checklist, things that you should be careful of. Hmm. So the consequences of academic misconduct, what can happen to you? avoiding academic misconduct, uh, you know, do your own work. Uh, so, how do you uh, avoid misconduct? And I gave you the references for these slides on academic integrity. And I uh, did not get a chance to show you the similarity detection software for paucity of time, but you can go through it and see it. Then we talked about using and acknowledging sources. We talked about some points of confusion. Uh, when do you not need to give credit? We discussed uh, what common knowledge is, when do you need to give credit, uh, deciding whether to quote, paraphrase or summarize. We discussed a, some special concerns in quotations. We also discussed the bottom line, you know, any time that you are confused as to whether you need to give credit or not, the, you should reference any word, idea or any production that generates out of you. I told you that after you finish your PhD, you know, after I finished my PhD, I reached a point where and, uh, you know, where uh, my, uh, uh, we joked about this fact that now, uh, you know, if I have to tell somebody my name, I say, my name is Aradhana Malik and in bracket, I will write in brackets, I will write down my parents name um, and the year of my birth. So, you know, thereby indicating that whatever I am saying is with reference to somebody, the knowledge generated by somebody else. I did not name myself Aradhana, somebody else did in so and so year. So, that is the stage you reach when you, uh, you know, do go through such a rigorous program. So, uh, that is, I mean, you know, that is that's a joke, but then uh, that is what you should really do. Reference anything and everything that you feel that you have not generated. And as you start generating newer knowledge, the proportion of referencing comes down and the proportion of your own ideas starts increasing. But till that point, it is always uh, helpful to give due credit to the information other people have generated. Many times you will be self-referencing, something that I did not cover here was that if you have written your own papers, you need to reference your own papers. If you have written and published your own paper, um, at that point, uh, reference yourself if it is information that you generated say 2 years ago or 3 years ago or 10 years ago, it is found in a paper that you have consulted, paper has been published. So, you must uh, you know reference yourself there even though this was knowledge generated by yourself. So, that is another aspect that I think I missed during the lecture, but I am telling you now. But do you know since it is already in the public domain, it will help if you can just reference yourself. So, uh, then you know deciding whether to we discussed about how you decide how to whether to quote, paraphrase or summarize. We discussed some special concerns in quotations. We discussed uh, some checklists for citations, in text citations, different types of citations, list of references. I mean this is how detailed this gets and uh, list of references, other sources. There is something that I want to show you. Actually, I forgot to show this to you when the lecture was going on, but maybe I will take this opportunity to show you something right now. And uh, I, yeah, the internet is working here. So, I want to show you something very interesting. When you are writing references, many times you do not have the 
uh, you know, it's very difficult to remember how to reference certain things or to get the complete reference. Many times you lose the complete reference, don't lose it, but if you do lose it, one very interesting resource that helps you get uh, the full references in a format that you obviously have to go through and uh, do again, but you don't have to physically type the whole reference and the formatting of course becomes easier if you use Google Scholar. So let's say uh, research writing for example. And let me see if I can find a full text paper. Okay, so I found a full text paper here. Okay, now I want to get a citation here. So, Google Scholar, okay, sorry, I think the size is too small. I will just increase the size here. So, I went to Google Scholar and I am looking for academic uh, papers. Okay, so maybe. This is a book, all of these are books. I am looking for a citation for a paper, hmm. research writing problems and pedagogies. So I click on this and this gives me the citation in different styles. So if you are following MLA style, it will give you the citation here. If you are following APA style, it gives you the citation in APA. If you are following Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver style, but again what this does is at least you know you do not have to hunt for specific uh, you know uh, or many times you can just copy and paste and of course like for example the uh, the APA method is very nicely uh, you know this 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 is perfect as far as the APA style is concerned but if, it, but if it were not at least you could get this and then make the necessary corrections from there. So what happens is when you click on this here just one click and the whole thing gets copied and then you copy it and you paste it onto your word document. So, this is one place where you can get full at least the complete reference the accurate reference, uh, but again you must cross check it. So, that is something that I should have shown you and I missed it anyway. So, then we talked about the writers block and uh, we discussed how different writers traps can um, you know affect uh, what you are doing. And discuss different types of writers traps. traps. We talked about uh, different blocks, writers blocks. We talked about uh, you know where you get stuck. And then we talked about different strategies for dealing with writers blocks. Then we moved on to revising your document. You have written your document, it is doing well, now you want to revise it. So, we discussed revi revisions purposes, uh, different types of revisions, revision, uh, what revision leads you to. We talked about different uh, methods of revision and a checklist for revision. So, we talked about a checklist for revision and we discussed how you can revise your documents. Okay. Then uh, we talked about strategies for detailed revisions. Uh, how you look for a patterns of oppositions, what you find, some um, you know evaluate how do you evaluate the logic of an argument, testing for believability, consistency and completeness, and a checklist for global revisions. Then uh, we discussed uh, the mistakes and policies that you can fall prey to while writing your document and that forms a part of the revision. So, you must uh, you know check for these policies and mistakes that you may make and we discussed various policies here. Uh, then we talked about some common categories of mistakes, we had talked about some language limiters in uh, the earlier lecture also and those came up here again. So, um, then we talked about editing and proofreading and how you prepare yourself to proofread um, some strategies to help identify your errors and how do you individualize the act of proofreading some suggestions for the use of tense in different uh, parts of the paper. Then we moved on to choosing a journal to publish in. We discussed some factors you could consider. Uh, we discussed the identification of impact and reputation of journals, the metrics. We I showed you some websites where you can find these metrics. Then we talked about author metrics and we had a discussion on predatory journals. 
We also talked about how you can identify predatory journals. So then we moved on to some lists of predatory publishers. Uh, then we the last lecture focused on responding to reviewer comments. So we assume that you have submitted your paper and the reviewer has given you some comments and the very last lecture discussed the various types of reviews you can get and how you deal with those reviews. So uh, responding to major and minor revisions, submitting your responses, etc. So this uh, pretty much covered the whole part the whole uh, uh, course as such. Now I know there are some things that you had asked me to include, but because the course has uh, sort of you know through your suggestions and while teaching uh, various things uh, were accidentally or inadvertently left out. And uh, uh, so those I will try to put in maybe in video form or at least in text form in the uh, you know as additional material. For example, the types of journal papers that you can write. Now, that there was a request for that, but unfortunately, I can't include it in the course anymore. So, I am going to uh, uh, write it up and get the resource material and add it as additional material in addition to your slides. So, um, somebody had asked me about writing a proposal. So, maybe I will share that with you. If I can find an online book on research writing, I will try and upload that for you all. So, I will at least share the link with you on the forum. But uh, it's been a real treat uh, interacting with you on the forum. Um, I'm recording this in the second week of classes. So, uh, you know, by the time you hear it, I mean, the, the recording will be over, the recording needs to be processed and then it's put up. So, I will get more queries from you as the course progresses and I will respond to you and I will try and accommodate your requests to the extent possible. But uh, do participate on the forum and uh, do stay connected even after the course is over. Uh, the material will be given to you after the deadline for the assignment has passed. So, you can uh, you know read it and then you can mull over it. And uh, I wish you all the best for your exams and I wish you all the best with your careers and with your attempts to write about your research. So, thank you very much for being such a fabulous audience for this course. Thank you.